Hello everyone, uh, I would like to welcome you all for today's lecture. We will briefly look at what we uh, discussed last time. Uh, we started looking at the oxidation of alcohols um, using uh, chromic acid and we considered uh, the uh, possibility of uh, uh, abstraction of hydrogen uh, in from the intermediate that is uh, involving chromium um, based intermediate. Uh, either in an intermolecular fashion uh, such as this. So, the base picks up the um, uh, proton from here uh, in an intermolecular fashion and then the oxidation occurs in this fashion. This was one possibility that we considered after the uh, alcohol reacts with the um, chromic acid and it forms uh, this intermediate. Uh, alternatively, uh, the, the same intermediate can also undergo an um, intramolecular uh, proton abstraction and that uh, can happen in this fashion uh, so that the uh, same intermediate that is formed. So from chromium 6 uh, we started and we get the chromium 4 as uh, one of the intermediates and of course the aldehyde comes from the corresponding alcohol. So, this is what we discussed uh, last time. Now, um, the, the uh, abstraction of proton uh, in an intermolecular or intramolecular fashion is something that we need to establish. It is very difficult to do that uh, with the chromium based intermediates because the reactions are very fast and it is very difficult to carry out uh, such reactions. But uh, whether such oxidations involve intermolecular or intramolecular proton abstraction has been studied uh, using uh, sulfur mediated oxidations. Now, we look at sulfur mediated oxidations and one of the uh, most important and very popular oxidations involving sulfur based uh, intermediates is uh, Swan oxidation. So, in the Swan oxidation uh, what has been uh, reported is uh, that the uh, DMSO uh, in, that is dimethyl sulfoxide reacts with oxalyl chloride. This is the acid halide from oxalic acid. So, it is called as oxalyl chloride, oxalyl chloride and uh, this uh, oxalyl chloride reacts with the DMSO uh, at low temperature to form certain intermediate which then reacts with the alcohol in the presence of triethylamine at minus 65 degrees in dichloromethane at solvent and eventually leads to the formation of the ketone. Now, this was reported in 1978 by Swern uh, and of course, his uh, collaborator Komura. So, this is what is uh, popularly known as Swern oxidation. Now, this oxidation is actually based on a well known oxidation called Moffett Fitzner oxidation which was discovered in 1963 which involved reaction of uh, DMSO. So, all of them are based on DMSO uh, based oxidations and uh, they react with uh, uh, dicyclohexyl carbodimide. Uh, this is the structure of dicyclohexyl carbodimide. As you can see that the, uh, the carbon atom here is uh, flanked uh, basically uh, by two uh, uh, nitrogens uh, by double bonds and therefore, this particular carbon atom is highly electrophilic particularly under the uh, presence of uh, catalytic amount of an acid such as phosphoric acid. Now, this was discovered in 1963. Uh, based on this, the oxidations of alcohols were reported. And subsequently, uh, in 1964, Barton reported the use of phosgene, which is a gas at room temperature with the boiling point being 8.3 degree centigrade in place of DCC. However, the use of phosgene is not very convenient and therefore, it did not become very popular this reaction. 
but the uh, moffett fitzner oxidation was actually carried out uh, uh, by by a lot of people in their oxidation uh, endeavors now the intermediates which are involved in uh, these kinds of oxidations are um, uh, are very closely related to another oxidation known as corn bloom oxidation so um, what are those intermediates uh, we will we'll look at those intermediates a bit later, but the first let us see how the mechanism of the Moffett for Fitzner oxidation and very closely how the Barton oxidation has been uh, also uh, looked at it. So uh, as I mentioned the dicyclohexyl carbodimide which is DCC uh, uh, is having uh, two nitrogens and one of the nitrogen uh, gets protonated with the phosphoric acid that we use it here and uh, it forms an intermediate or the protonation. So if we write cyclohexane as Cy then what it would look like it would look something like this and this gets protonated and then you have a positive charge on the nitrogen. This makes uh, this carbon uh, much more electrophilic than the original DCC because the positive charge here uh, on the nitrogen would, uh, would like to get uh, uh, neutralized when the alcohol attacks on it. So if uh, or the DMSO attacks on it. So first DMSO attacks, uh, so you have a DMSO here, your methyl here and the methyl here. The DMSO O minus attacks onto this carbon. This is how it is shown here. So when DMSO attacks onto this carbon which is now um, uh, having a nitrogen protonated. So this is the intermediate that is going to, to come out. This is a very crucial intermediate and again now the nit second nitrogen gets protonated and again forms the same ammonium ion like, like what we have written here but now on the other nitrogen and again this carbon becomes uh, very electrophilic and um, uh, at the same time now the alcohol reacts onto the sulfur and this carbon uh, oxygen sulfur bond breaks and the new carbon oxygen bond is formed because the carbon now is electrophilic because of the protonation of the nitrogen here. And therefore uh, the um, what is proposed is that the, the dihydrogen phosphate ion which comes out after the loss of proton from here. Uh, in, in both the cases the protons are basically lost. So you have uh, dihydrogen phosphate anion that picks up the hydrogen from here that picks up the proton from here and the negative charge of the oxygen from the alcohol then reacts with the sulfur and then this bond breaks. Thereby now the phosphoric acid is again regenerated by the abstraction of this particular proton and of course the nucleophilicity of the alcohol becomes larger. And that leads to this particular uh, intermediate uh, and uh, this intermediate as it was proposed earlier is that again base which is present in the reaction medium uh, you have this uh, dihydrogen phosphate and that can pick up a proton from here and then oxidation can occur in this fashion to give uh, the ketone and then as you can see the dimethyl sulfide goes off and of course you regenerate the phosphoric acid. Now the uh, only thing what happens is that when this uh, dicyclohexyl uh, carbodimide uh, is uh, protonated and, and then of course uh, you lose the oxygen from the DMSO then you form a carbon oxygen double bond and this is what leads to the formation of this dicyclohexyl urea. This is a urea having two dicyclohexyl uh, parts. So uh, this is uh, something uh, which is an, an important byproduct but then this particular byproduct does create some problem which we will talk in a minute. But here what I would like to mention is that this particular intermediate which is shown in blue and another intermediate this shown in this blue also are very crucial intermediates. Now as uh, these crucial intermediates and this dicyclohexyl urea are the ones which uh, are worth considering. Now what happens during the, re the reaction that this dicyclohexyl urea uh, becomes uh, difficult 
to remove uh, while purification of the ketone is being done. So uh, many people did not want to um, prefer to use dicyclohexyl carbodimide because of the difficulty in separating dicyclohexyl urea. So originally there was no base that was used uh, therefore the reaction took a bit longer time. But later on they started using trifluoroacetic acid and pyridine as a combination in which trifluoroacetic acid protonates the dicyclohexyl carbodimide and of course pyridine acts as a base and thus the reaction gets facilitated. In general the DMSO is used in excess and of course as you can see that the main role of the DMSO uh, um, um, is of course to get activated by DCC. So the DCC activates the DMSO forming an intermediate of uh, this type where you can say that E is a part of the dicyclohexyl carbodimide and therefore you have a positive charge here. So this is the uh, actually role of DMSO that so the oxygen of the DMSO gets activated by the DCC and then your alcohol attacks onto this carbon and this goes as a leaving group. We will look at it these intermediates a little more carefully and um, the Barton's oxidation with phosgene is also somewhat similar. So there your DMSO attacks on um, on uh, first gene and the first gene is nothing but this um, particular uh, compound where there are two chlorines attached to a carbonyl group and this is what is at the first gene and it is acting like an electrophile uh, and DMSO attacks onto this uh, carbon and leading to the formation of this intermediate. Now this intermediate of course these reactions have to be done at low temperature. And uh, once this intermediate forms, uh, it is expected that such an intermediate can uh, lose uh, uh, carbon dioxide and of course chlorine and forming uh, after the loss of carbon dioxide, uh, this intermediate here. And this intermediate now has uh, the sulfur as positively charged and there is a leaving group which is the chlorine. Therefore, the um, alcohol attacks onto this particular intermediate and leading to another intermediate of this kind. Now if you look at very carefully whether you consider this as an intermediate or this as an another intermediate and the second intermediate is this kind. So this intermediate is very similar to this particular intermediate uh, and this intermediate is also similar to, uh, to this intermediate or this intermediate or this intermediate because you have a leaving group on, on the sulfur which is connected to the oxygen in this particular case or in this case you have a chlorine as a leaving group. So both these crucial intermediates which I have been mentioning right from the beginning whether it is a Moffat Fritzner oxidation or the Barton oxidation are similar in nature. Now um, if we uh, go back and look at uh, the literature. So basically uh, these intermediates which I have mentioned as crucial intermediates of two different kinds are essentially related to yet another very important oxidation which was the, the basis for all the oxidations involving sulphur is known as Kornblum oxidation. So it was a Nathan Kornblum who actually uh, discovered this is in 1959 and this particular um, oxidation is also based on sulfur and of course all the sulfur based oxidations involving DMSO should uh, definitely give credit uh, to uh, Kornblum. So what was the Kornblum oxidation? The Kornblum oxidation involved the reaction of uh, say primary tosylate or uh, a uh, bromide of this kind. Uh, to start with of course the reactions were carried out using uh, very good leaving groups on a primary uh, carbon atom. The reason was that in these cases the reaction uh, requires the, rea the use of DMSO in the presence of a base like sodium bicarbonate at high degrees 150 degrees. So in these cases what happens is the DMSO acts like a nucleophile and um, uh, reacts uh, at say for example here in an SN2 fashion and leading uh, to uh, uh, an intermediate of uh, this type here 
as I have shown it here. And in a similar fashion if you take it here then of course you will have similar uh, intermediate like you have O, R, CH2, CH2, CH2 and then of course you have oxygen and then you have the um, uh, DMSO reacting like this and of course OTS will go as a uh, leaving group here. So in all these cases as you can see the leaving group once it leaves the carbon the, the DMSO uh, oxygen O minus attacks and this is the carbon and of course this is the carbon where DMSO has attacked. Now this intermediate which I have shown it here is very similar to the crucial intermediate that we have talked in in uh, Moffitt Fitzner oxidation and uh, the another one is of course this one. So this is related to this particular uh, intermediate. So this intermediate here is very closely related to this intermediate as you can see that there is a carbon that holds a hydrogen, the carbon that holds a hydrogen here, here and of course you have oxygen then you have a sulfur positively charged and of course you have the two methyls. So the base can pick up the proton as I have shown it here and, and the oxidation uh, completes by the loss of dimethyl sulfide as we have discussed in other cases. So, uh, uh, so this particular intermediate as um, shown here is similar to the intermediate that is shown here even in Barton's oxidation. So both in Barton's oxidation as well as in moffett Fresnel oxidation the last intermediate is uh, very similar to the intermediate that is uh, formed in Kornblum oxidation. Except that, that uh, in the case of uh, Kornblum oxidation the uh, first intermediate uh, directly comes with having an oxygen here because uh, the DMSO is the only as a nucleophile that is acting. Whereas in the other cases like Fitzner, Moffitt, Fitzner oxidation or Barton's oxidation, we activate the DMSO to form electrophilic sulfur to which alcohol attacks and gives the similar intermediate as, as we see in the Kornblum oxidation. Apart from uh, Kornblum and Mo Moffitt, Fitzner oxidation and Barton oxidation, Parikh and Doring also reported in 1967 uh, a reagent using pyridine sulfur trioxide and uh, in a similar fashion the oxidation takes place. So DMSO interacts with this pyridine sulfur trioxide complex where now you have a electrophilic sulfur, another electrophilic sulfur and a leaving group is this pyridinium ion. So the O- attacks onto this sulfur, pyridinium ion goes and this is the intermediate that is formed to which the alcohol attacks uh, where the pyridine takes up the proton from here. So pyridine can take up a proton from here and of course you generate the anion of the alcohol which goes and attacks onto this and then you have um, uh, th uh, this intermediate that is formed uh, of course pyridine is still present there and then pyridine can pick up a proton from here and then oxidation can take place with the loss of dimethyl sulfide. So as you can see it is very similar to uh, the, the oxidation that we have discussed earlier and uh, this is another crucial intermediate here uh, and this is another crucial intermediate. So as we have been naming all the crucial intermediates they are similar to um, this is the moffett fitzner oxidation first crucial intermediate, this is the second crucial intermediate in Barton oxidation this is how the one intermediate forms and then rearranges to this crucial intermediate and this is the second crucial intermediate after the alcohol attacks. So in place of DCC, first gene, pyridine sulfur trioxide, many different electrophiles are used such as acetic anhydride, trifluoroacetic anhydride uh, and of course trifluoromethane sulfonic anhydride. So you have CO2O or you have uh, uh, CF3 SO2 twice O. So uh, basically these are the various kinds of uh, uh, intermediates which are used and of course this is the, uh, the reference that you can see which is, gives the details of these oxidations. Now um, the uh, if, you, if you look at it very carefully what we have seen it is that DMSO based oxidations 
in general can be written up like this. The DMSO reacts with an electrophile whether it is DCC uh, for gene or pyridine sulfur trioxide uh, or anything of that sort you get uh, basically activation of the uh, uh, DMSO by the electrophile uh, and leading to this intermediate here to which, to which the alcohol attacks and forms this intermediate from where the uh, aldehyde or the ketone gets released along with dimethyl sulfide. So essentially what is happening is whether the EX is phosgene, DCC, pyridine sulfur trioxide or oxalic chloride or acetic anhydride or trifluoroacetic anhydride any other electrophile. And of course the intermediate is comparable uh, with the corn bloom type of oxidation here. Because this is the crucial intermediate which then uh, undergoes uh, loss of proton and along with dimethyl sulfide here to form the uh, carbonyl group. Now uh, whether the uh, reaction is uh, involving uh, an abstraction of a proton in an intermolecular fashion or an intramolecular fashion was basically uh, studied in detail by um, the uh, scientist named Torsel here in 1966. What it did of course as uh, we have seen in general that the DMSO gets activated with an electrophile forming this intermediate to which the first crucial intermediate to which alcohol attacks and forming this second crucial intermediate from where either this proton can get abstracted uh, essentially to uh, lose dimethyl sulfide and give the ketone. But then is there a possibility of removing this proton first? Uh, because this uh, carbon is uh, next to the sulfur which is positively charged. So this is what the uh, scientist uh, or the chemist Torsel did it. He took the, the uh, intermediate of this type from any of these activated uh, DMSO activated based intermediates and reacted with um, the uh, alcohol that contained CD2OH. That means it is a deuterated alcohol. Uh, so once the deuterated alcohol reacts with it, you have two deuteriums here uh, onto the carbon atom. And um, when the base was added to it, base, uh, so the base uh, allowed the oxidation to take place where of course one would expect that this oxidation would take place and you get the corresponding ketone with a deuterium. But the released dimethyl sulfide led to the formation of the uh, compound of this type in which there was a deuterium here. And not this, that means if, uh, uh, if only such oxidation is taking place as I have shown here, then we would expect the hydrogen to be retained at the uh, two ends of the sulfur uh, as CH3 and CH3. But what was observed was at one end it was CH3 the other end it was CH2D. So the, the mechanism that was proposed that the BS base picks up the proton from here generating negative charge of this type and this undergoes an intramolecular uh, uh, abstraction of the deuterium and then it forms the corresponding ketone and of course the uh, dimethyl sulfide containing one deuterium. Yet in another experiment what he did was he took the DMSO which was, uh, which was um, having uh, two um, uh, CD3 groups attached to it and of course you activate with any electrophile that we have discussed so far and this is the crucial first intermediate that is formed to which now normal alcohol is added not a deuterated alcohol because the deuterium is now incorporated in the DMSO. So this is the intermediate that one would expect to form. Now if uh, this reaction occurs uh, in a similar fashion as we have discussed that the deuterium, uh, the, the proton or the deuterium that is present onto the carbon atom attached to sulfur takes, uh, uh, gets deprotonated then of course the base will pick up the proton from here and of course uh, you will get an intermediate of this kind. Uh, had it been uh, directly then of course you would get back the, um, the DMSO as it as the dimethyl sulfide as it is. But if uh, in an intramolecular fashion you, the proton abstraction is taking place 
then of course one can generate an intermediate of this kind and which then loses a proton from here in an intramolecular fashion and then leads to the formation of the aldehyde as normal expected. But then the, the dimethyl sulfide which has come out contains the hydrogen rather than the deuterium because the other possibility which, which we, we can think about it is of course without involving intramolecular activation or removal of a proton we can think that uh, it, if it is an intermolecular hydrogen then of course the base can pick up the hydrogen from here and one can get the oxidation of course but then one would get RCOH plus uh, the DMS that is formed should be uh, this. carbon here. So this is how it should form but what was observed was that the hydrogen gets uh, incorporated into onto the carbon atom that means the mechanism is an intramolecular removal of the hydrogen from the intermediate that is uh, the crucial intermediate that we talk about it. So uh, having established this particular type of uh, intramolecular abstraction of a proton then of course many more oxidations have been reported and it was finally uh, Corey and Kim who uh, also uh, utilized uh, conceptually similar uh, but somewhat different starting materials. For example, one can also uh, get this uh, intermediate which we call it as from the crucial intermediate uh, which is what is comes from the dimethyl sulfide and uh, here you have a leaving group here. So this is the intermediate that is expected to form and, the, and derive from the DMSO to which alcohol reacts and forms the next intermediate that allows the formation of the ketone or aldehyde depending on what alcohol one uses but then you have this intermediate which is what is formed. So uh, in order to get this intermediate of course you have an X minus. In order to get this intermediate one can also start not from DMSO but one can also start from say for example dimethyl sulfide and react with some electrophile such as halogen and generate um, an intermediate of this type here which can also act as, as a good uh, intermediate crucial intermediate to which alcohol can react and of course can form the intermediate of this kind which eventually gives the aldehyde or ketone. So this was uh, developed by Corey and Kim which we will discuss in our next class uh, more in detail. So uh, you please go ahead and complete uh, uh, look at whatever I have discussed today and uh, get ready for the next class till then bye and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.